another amazing year has gone by and this is my annual video the 2018 gear in review Every year since I started the channel, I would take the end of the year and I would uh, just talk about every single piece of gear I reviewed since the last one of these I did. You know, what happened? Do I still have the product? Uh, what, what was the backstory on that? Was there something interesting that's happened during either that video that I didn't include or since? So let's get into it. Well, the first product that I reviewed since the last uh, gear review, which was in 2017, was the TC Dark Matter and Flashback pedals uh, with the Quintessence uh, pedal. Hey guys, this is Tor. I'm here at uh, at GitCon, and I'm here with Phil McKnight. Yep. How's it going? It's going really good now because you know sometimes when we do these tone prints, you know you'll you'll have somebody come in and we'll kind of try to tweak for a sound. Right. But you basically came in with like the recipe, like yeah. here it is, here's what I want. I did a tone print with TC Electronics when I was at GitCon in 2017, and we call it the Nerd Whammy, where you can download uh, to this day. You can download the the tone print that I created. It lets you uh, play with that. And uh, so what happened was when uh, TC sent me the pedal. Obviously, they sent me a, a pedal because uh, I did the tone print they uh, included a couple extra pedals and I thought it'd be fun to review them I still have the dark matter and the um, the flashback pedal they're really cool I like them a lot and um, but as you guys know I've been diehard probably since the beginning I'm a huge acid reflux delay pedal fan as you guys noticed I, I mentioned that last year when I talked about another delay pedal I reviewed and I still use a DD3 by Voss the next product was the Lawrence Petros design Coca Pelli drive <laughs> If you notice in that video, I had my hand a little bit in the design aspect of it. I thought it'd be cool if it was copper and uh, gave us some ideas about adding the Coca Pelli logo. And uh, it was a really cool pedal. I still have mine, of course, and it's on my board pretty regularly. The next piece of gear I reviewed was the Dane Electro 59 NOS. <laughs> I still have it. I love it. In fact, I use it all the time. And I would definitely consider it in one of my top rotations of guitars when I'm playing guitar. Um, that guitar, the only regret I have at this point is I picked red and I thought about it and I thought about picking another color and I still like the red, but I kind of wish maybe I just went with something like black. It, I really would like to go and get the 12 string now. I think the 12 string will be the, a, a cool addition and have a set, maybe get one of those in black. The next product I reviewed was the Jojo Bantam amp. <laughs> This is a series of amplifiers, if you're familiar with them, that are uh, that have a, tu a preamp tube in them, and then of course they're like solid state power sections. There was nothing about it special, although it's not an expensive amp by any means. Uh, I think it's like $150 new. It's uh, it's fun, it's useful, but it you know it, it didn't blow me away. I think the aesthetics of the entire Bantamp la lineup of Jojo amps they look like the Power Rangers or something. I ended up trading that amp uh, away, and uh, and uh, so that was the end of that. Next thing we reviewed was the Rivera Mini Rock Rec. Now, the Mini Rock Rec is a really cool idea. It's the idea that you can load, uh, put your amp on a load and record with it late at night. Built-in kind of IRs, but they're not digital. It's like an analog technology. Um, the quality of it is fantastic. It is fantastic. I still have it, but I don't plan to keep it. I purchased it, and the reason I don't plan to keep it is even though I like it and I stand by everything I said in that video, I haven't been using it. And the reason, the main reason, is I bought after that. I liked it so much. I bought the the uh, Rock Crusher. In fact, I think yeah, that's behind me. <laughs> I bought the Rock Crusher, and the the thing is, is even though the Rock Crusher is minus some of those features. I really feel like 
Out of the two, if I could only have one, I'd get the Rock Crusher. The next review is the JHS Pedal Review. <laughs> When uh, we did the video, the live show, and I said, hey, you guys helped me pick out a pedal. I thought it'd be fun. And I gave you some criteria and you guys, uh, we had it down to like the Wampler or that. Timmons, Timmons, Paisley. Oh man, it changed once the Timmons got put in there. Timmons, I think it's Timmons guys, right? The Andy Timmons JHS pedal was a pedal that I had been thinking about getting for a long time, but I had also been considering getting the JHS Angry Driver pedal. Um, so what happened? Well, um, I ended up getting rid of the JHS pedal uh, recently uh, and uh, I bought this. And A being them, I really thought the JHS pedal sounded a little, little better than this. But given the fact that I'm a true diehard Boss fan, I have a lot of their pedals. I like their quality uh, and the pedal sounded a lot alike. Plus I got some extra features like having the blues driver. So the next one I did was the St. Vincent guitar. That was another instrument where we picked it on the live show and I purchased it and reviewed it. You guys uh, you know, had a say in that. We bought the instrument, uh, kind of got to demonstrate how you could find a deal. We went and reached out and, you know, for a, to, for a seller to give us a discount, got the instrument, liked it. I ended up not keeping it. And mostly because a lot of product in this, uh, in this, sh on this channel is, like I said, is purchased by me and I'm definitely, unfortunately not a never ending wallet. So, um, to get other product or to advance videos forward, especially with uh, some of the, the, the videos this year, the channel did, uh, 60% of the videos this year were instructional style videos versus only 40% being um, the uh, review style videos. And those instructional videos have a lot more cost added to them. So I was just trying to move some of the money over to the more instructional style content. And uh, that being said, I sold it to my buddy Mike. He loves it still. And uh, I miss it a little bit. <laughs> so I, I do. The next thing I, I reviewed was the $10,000 John Petrucci guitar. <laughs> So my buddy Nick uh, asked me to do a setup on it and do some fret work to it. And uh, long story short, I asked him, if, hey, could I review it? He allowed me to review it. And it was more of a first impression. And mostly because uh, I knew due to his extreme limited sales, they didn't make very many. And it's uh, extreme nature. I thought, hey, this would be a cool thing to show the uh, gear community. The next product I checked out was the Holy Board. This was the uh, aluminum uh, version. A holy board reached out to me because I know I'm a big fan of holy board and I've, I've talked about them many times. I've owned two of them and uh, they sent this out to me and I reviewed it. I really enjoyed it. I still have it and uh, I still kept my other holy boards. Hands down, I'm still a holy board fan. Uh, it's what I use 99% uh, of the time. It's very rare for me to use anything other than the holy boards. I just like them. Next is uh, up was the Fender pedals. Now that was exciting for me because it's the first time Fender reached out to me. And as a channel, you know that's such a big company, and obviously I'm a, such a huge Fender fan because I have so many Fender products uh, that I've all bought. When they said, "Hey, they'd send me the pedals to check out," that was really cool. They sent them to me on a nice pedal board. They custom did it all out. It was really great. Uh, I I like everything I said in the video. Video. Uh, I still stand by it, except for one thing I forgot to talk about, which was the LEDs are super bright and they like burn the retinas out of your head. Uh, so uh, some people said after I talked about that on a live show, how great that is on stage. But for the bedroom player, it's a little much to be looking at three feet away. I really like the Pugilist. I still stick with that's the best $100 high gain pedal. <laughs> The next one I did was the one watt Marshall. Uh, that was the DSL. I've since now tried the 20 watt DSL Marshall head. Really liked it. Really wish I would have went that way. Uh, if you watched, I was talking about getting the 20 watt and the last minute I pulled the trigger on the one watt thinking this would be great. I sold the one watt off and then I revisited it with, by going to another one and checking it out. I still think it's really harsh, trebly. It's not a pleasant sounding amp. And, and if anyone out there that likes it, that's great. But I've noticed the trend. If your first impression of it is that you tried 
that amp. I think a lot of people have said they liked it. Although 100% of the people that I know have either had, like me, or are, had tried the previous version, the actual version where there was uh, a, an, an additional control on the clean channel, and it was the more expensive one for sure. It's uh, But that one, they don't like the new one for the same reason. The other one was fuller, it was bigger. It sounded like a, a JCM2000 full-size amp just shrunk into a small package. This one sounds like a JCM2000 shrunken. It doesn't sound full, it doesn't sound big. Next, I reviewed my Warwick custom bass. <laughs> Uh, I've had it now for a year, so what do I think? My gut said, don't worry about the exotic bodies. Go find a light wood, like a cherry wood, or an alder or something like that, get a sort of nice light piece and have them paint it one color. And I regret not doing that. Uh, the instrument uh, does not get played enough. I love it, but I don't play it as much as I uh, as I thought I would. It, it's, it sounds better and it plays better than my, my main bass. However, because it's about four pounds heavier than my Fender bass, I don't play it as much. It's kind of a weighty instrument, even though I sort it as light as I can. Maybe, hopefully, one year go back to Germany or uh, if the work guys ever w uh, w would love uh, to work with me again to, to order another one with those changes to it. It's the best built bass. No question. In fact, uh, uh, let's give it an award. Uh, best bass uh, of uh, of the my life. <laughs> Next, after that, we did the Chapman, the Ghost Fret. I bought the Ghost Fret. Uh, you guys, that was another one you guys wanted me to review, so I made the purchase. I reviewed it from Guitar Center. Um, ended up being a sharp of my axe because I sold it for the main reason of I wasn't really into that shape uh, to begin with, and uh, I didn't maybe talk about this. I, I like to talk about in this video the things I missed talking about in those videos. One of the big things with that Chapman guitar that 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 didn't m let it stick with me was that the top didn't look anything like the photos. The guitars looked great in person and if you were that was the first time you saw them, I think you would have liked them, but when you were, you know, when you ordered off of a picture that was so amazing <laughs> and then you get it, you know, you're thinking in your head, "Oh, it's not going to be as good as a picture," but these were substantially different. Next, we reviewed the Pedal Pal uh, JC Manhunter Gold. <laughs> I still have that pedal. Next was the Sterling guitar. Uh, so you know, when Sterling reached out, they gave me an option to pick anything I wanted. My instinct was to pick the seven string Petrucci because I wanted one. Uh, but you know, your YouTuber side said, pick the instrument you think the audience would best appreciate. So I went with the roasted maple because I thought that would be a good discussion and a good video for you guys. Um, but I don't know if I regret that because I like making content that you guys uh, enjoy. Uh, but uh, I can tell you right now, if I would have picked the seven string Petrucci, uh, I would have kept it. I did the Archon. That was the video where I bought my used Archon. It's right behind me, actually. And uh, it was destroyed in the mail. <laughs> And, uh, and, it, and it survived and it worked it all out. I love it. Obviously, I still have it. It's uh, it's one of my main amps uh, for sure. Uh, it, it's definitely one of my go-to amps. Uh, I've re, I re... Let's move out of the way. I redid it. I uh, put a new grill on it. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw what I did this. I, I changed the way it looked, not because it had damage, because I didn't like the way the Archon looked. This is, to me, a more traditional, kind of straightforward look, kind of like this Friedman. I like everything just very bland. I'm not looking for a, a fancy amp. I like, I think it's because I'm a Fender guy and I play Fender amps. To me, Fender amps are just so basic <laughs> that I like just basic looking amps. Next, we did the Squire. Now, this one was a different one because uh, this is, was uh, something Fender reached out and I did that again. I made the decision saying, okay, I think the audience would like to see a Squire guitar. So I went through emails and this was the Squire guitar you guys picked. In fact, this video was one of those videos where it was uh, like number one requested by you, so I did it. Uh, I really thought the guitar was cool, but keep in mind, uh, it, I really did it for you guys. So it was one of those reviews where I was just trying to show you guys something that you're interested in. Another interesting video, I did the self-esteem boost pedal. I think what happened, my understanding is, after I did the review, uh, some of you said, you sent me emails saying, I bought one, you know, it's coming. Some of you guys said it was back ordered. And then I started getting emails from you guys saying they stopped making it and 
they're either out of business or something, but I think I got, I got the sense that they, they're not making it. It's really sad, I still have it. I like it, it makes me smile every time I see it. Uh, I like the things I used it in the video for. That was kind of a, a bummer, <laughs> is what it is. So the self-esteem is, uh, is a rest in peace, it's, it's gone, I think. The next one was my Gibson SG. Love this guitar, I love everything about this guitar. When me and Ralph did the comparison of the two SGs, a lot of you guys picked Ralph's, and I really like Ralph's as well, but I've just really bonded with my SG. Uh, the sound that coming out of it is just far superior to a lot of the guitars I own, uh, and I'm really impressed by that. Then I did the uh, the uh, Hughes and Kittner, which is down there, right there. Hughes and Kittner Grandmeister 40 review. Uh, that was funny because uh, some of you guys don't know this, but uh, the patrons do because they got a patron version of the video. I cooked an egg on the top, or I tried to, it failed because uh, somebody asked me how hot does it get, and I thought I don't know. Let's find out. Let's cook an egg on it. We're gonna see how hot it is. That's right. Let's see what happens. We'll, uh, we'll see if we'll cook an egg. Oh yeah, why not? Nope, it's not even warm enough to cook an egg. What's funny was, I love, I, I gotta tell you this, what's what I love about the Hughes and Kinder guys. I sent a copy of that video to the Hughes and Kinder guys, uh, the egg one, and they loved it. They thought it was the funniest thing ever and they really thought that was crazy fun. Uh, then I reviewed the Orangewood Acoustic. Now, if you guys have seen recently, that guitar was donated to Guitars for Vets. That was a great guitar, and I was, I'm happy that we got to donate it. Uh, then I reviewed the Bujera Attenuator, which is cool, because uh, uh, I never reviewed any Bujera stuff, and I really never tried or bought any Bujera stuff. And uh, I was really impressed for 99 bucks. I still think if you're in a budget and you want an attenuator, it's a good thing. What's nice is I think one of the things cool about that video is you should read some of the comments down below below that video. There are a lot of people saying that they have it and they love it, and there's a couple of people saying they have it and they have problems, and I think that's a good reference point. Maybe you should consider that. Obviously, I like I said in the video, I, I bought it, I used it. Um, however, I did not put it through like months of testing and I didn't try it through like 50 different amps because again, it's not that involved of a review. Player Strat, the Fender's Player Strat. That was something that just came out this year and uh, I reviewed that and I was able to take it apart and take apart my Mexican Standard Strat and compare them. Uh, and it was a really detailed uh, review and I think it helped a lot of you guys out there that were thinking about getting the new one and confused about what was different about it. And so that's why I was, I was excited I could take them apart. Well, that was a lot of work <laughs> video. Uh, I still stick by the player strats are great however uh interesting enough out of the two the player strat and my standard strat as you guys have seen me say many times in the videos i'm really uh that standard strat i have is i've had for a while and i really really like it i think i've had it since like 2005 no 2010 2010 love it uh, so it's the one that kept, it's the one I kept. Next was the Fret Zealot. Now the Fret Zealot, uh, we did that video and if they send me a product to test, we're gonna test it. We're not gonna just promote it, we're gonna see. Okay, so I'm, uh, I broke it. I, I broke it. I just want to point out something cool as a backstory to that was the plan was the reason why I broke it was I was trying to remove it in the video because after I checked it out, I wanted to remove it to see one, if it was removable, but two, I wanted to give it to my friend Stephanie because she's the one that mentioned them to me when she saw them at the NAMM show. She said, it'd be cool to learn on one of those. And when they reached out to me, I said, Hey, they're going to send me one after I review it. You can have it. And that way you can use learn on it. What's great about Fred Zellett was amazing was after they saw the video, they sent me a thank you for doing the review and for being honest and they they said they welcomed all of my criticisms and didn't mind how it turned out because they said they learned from that like one they should put a warning that you it's not real you can't reapply it because there was no warnings on the packaging for that and two they're going to kind of change some of the packaging maybe or some of the product and improve it but more importantly they sent me another strip which i was able to put in the box with the original uh, uh stuff and give to stephanie so she's had it ever since i'll eventually give you an update on how she thought about that how that worked out the Eastwood guitar. So the Eastwood guitar was the Surfcaster guitar. Uh, that was a cool guitar. Uh, that was, uh, you know, if you like the Surfcaster, which I, I do, uh, we gave that a review. That guitar was still very cool, very impressive. Only thing about in the video that I didn't know, and I found out later, is that they told me that the guitar is made in Korea. So I thought the guitar was made in China. And what's nice about that now, having that piece of information, is the guitar is $1,000 new, and uh, that makes more sense. Next, we did the Beatronics Royal Jelly. <laughs> Thank you.
that was a great pedal i still have it love it uh, it's huge it's amazing it's expensive um, but it is a like it's like a piece of art <laughs> in and of itself and it sounds fantastic then i did the mark tremonti the prs mt15 i bought that amp and uh, i did the review and compared it against my archon and i decided from that uh, from doing the comparison i still prefer my archon so i uh, sold it and kept the archon another pedal i reviewed this year was the 68 deluxe i have the 68 deluxe i did the review uh, a lot of people especially friends now of mine have them and love them and so the question is what do i think well it's definitely one of my favorite pedals for sure this pedal does that <laughs> But I have an original 68 uh, pedal, the, ones, the, the first one I ever bought from Lawrence. And I still am just attached to that pedal. That's the pedal I use the most. Now the 68 Deluxe is a better pedal. It has more features, it's, it's, got, it's just great. Why I don't use it as much as my original 68, I don't know. I just do, uh, again, creature habit, know your gear, right? Once you have a piece of gear and you're familiar with it and how it works and it, how it's gonna work in your rig and the size, you know, it's just what you know. Next was my Supro amp. And uh, I, I actually said in the video, it's my favorite amp tone. And yeah, we're gonna post that right now. Best, uh, best amp of the year is what I'm gonna give that amp uh, that I tried this year. Or that, and I bought that amp, of course. Yeah, it's my favorite amp of the year I reviewed, for sure. Next, we have the Tremonti Wah pedal. <laughs> Morley and Tremonti worked together to make a limited edition wall pedal and I reviewed that. That wall pedal was very expensive, $250. Uh, you know, I like it. I still have it. Next, I reviewed the Fender Telecaster Deluxe. Now, that was the one I bought from Sweetwater where it came in and it was horrible. That ended up being a, a, all kinds of fiasco. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, it's the same thing. Some people appreciated the review, some people didn't. Obviously, Sweetwater uh, reached out and asked me to come to Sweetwater and check out their new revisions. Uh, that video caused Sweetwater to revise their 55-point inspection and change a few things and improve the processes. And uh, they were very nice. They said, thank you for the very honest video. They said, you know, after watching the video and then getting the guitar and looking at everything you said we saw we had some opportunities to fix things and they took that opportunity and they fixed them and that's great now the sad thing is uh, i still i haven't ordered an instrument from sweetwater since uh, i returned that instrument and decided after that experience i just wasn't in the mood for the guitar anymore so i can't really tell you you know obviously the, the i stick by the review i didn't like the instrument really kind of you know not impressed and unfortunately i don't have anything to say like positive uh, you know, like, hey, now the Sweetwater process is better. I haven't seen it. I don't know. I just don't know. Okay, so uh, anyways, next, Rock Rabbit. That was the Teleswitch one. Oh, man, has that thing changed my life? Since then, not only have I left it, but then after you guys, a lot of you guys said, well, why don't you just put a Strat switch tip on it? And I always thought, you know, I did that in the past, but I didn't like it. But now at an angle, I do. I have played my telly way more than I've ever played my telly since I've, I, I, I got that Rock Rabbit uh, plate. Um, I really do. I love my telly. I play it all the time. Every night. I play my telly every single night. Then I reviewed the Fender Mustang. Now, the Fender Mustang GT100 was sent out to a bunch of YouTubers. I was one of those to look at the new version 2 uh, uh, updates. And uh, so I reviewed the updates. And, um, you know, I gave you some first impressions of that. I really like the updates for the record. I really like the uh, bass breaker uh, sound the most. But like I said, I'm not a huge modeling person. If I was into modeling amps, I'd probably consider it more, but I just don't use a modeling amp. Uh, in fact, it made me kind of realize something. I don't really own a modeling amp. Uh, I've owned them, but I always seem to cycle out of them. The main amps I use are my Roland Cubes that are solid state, which are not modeling amps. So it's a funny thing to me. Um, how that works it just seems like i'm uh, like i said i seem to very be very knob interface uh, focused than screen i'm not into screen next i reviewed the journey acoustic it looks like you just there isn't really a quick well crap holy cool you guys are get familiar with them. There a lot of YouTubers are now reviewing them because they're getting sent out and stuff. And they sent one out to me to review. And uh, I did a first impression of that and it went through it. Then I reviewed 
reviewed Sweetwater Candy. <laughs> I just thought that was worth a laugh. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. This pedal was fun for me, you know what I mean? It really brought back the love of Marshall I had. In fact, it was a great pedal, I, I loved it. It really gave me a resurgence into my love for Marshalls. And uh, it's a great pedal. So definitely would put that as uh, pedal of the year for me. Uh, so there you go. And then last this year, I reviewed the new Carvin uh, preamp pedal, the X1. And uh, that was to kind of talk about the fact that Carvin's back in business. Uh, it was a really cool pedal. I was excited about that. One of the comments that I thought was really interesting to talk about that was they said, you know, one of the things that Carvin did that was interesting was they shut down the facility and they no longer are under warranties. And then they immediately reopened. And uh, I made a comment to that comment that that's an interesting point and, and maybe I'll talk to them about it in the future. Uh, so maybe at the NAMM show, if I see them or if I, you know, if I can talk to them soon, that's something we could talk about. I would love to know your thoughts on this more. And if you guys know information, you can put down below. But like I said, I, I, I feel like the new Carvin is really just trying to emerge from the old Carvin. I don't think it was the old switcheroo, you know, hey, that's a good way to get out of this mess and, and do something else. So we'll see, we'll see. Again, I don't know, I could be totally wrong the other way well there you have it that's my 2018 gear in review but more importantly like this video and put comments down below if you think i should revisit prior years so maybe next week i could do the 2017 gear and review revision so now that it's been a year since that video how do i feel about those products from 2017 or 2016. the channel's only been around three and a half years so i can't go back you know too many years but uh, i have now three of these uh, to look reflect back on including this one if you'd like me to revisit the other two and and tell me tell you what i think of those products and whether or not i still have them uh, please thumbs up the video and put comments uh, if the video does well i'll do it as always i want to thank you guys so much for spending some time with me today and until next time, know your gear.